Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Oilers podcast. I am your host and former Oilers game day producer, Brett Holden. As mentioned on today's episode, we're going to talk about the Oilers 5-3 loss in Minnesota. Ah, ah. We've got some some thoughts. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But also on today's episode, Jack Campbell. Seems like after every Jack Campbell game, we're having this conversation. But yet, here we go again. What to do with Jack Campbell. We'll talk about that also a little later on today's episode. And to wrap up today's episode, we're going to go through the good, the bad, and the ugly. From, uh, well, frankly, ugly game against the Minnesota Wild. All that and much more on today's episode of Locked On Oilers. Thank you so much for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you find your podcast. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't pretty in Minnesota as the Oilers lose 5-3 to three against the Wild, a team that needed a win, and also the Edmonton Oilers that needed to find some sort of consistency. On a three-game win streak, they're coming in on a, a second game of a back-to-back. Yes, they can't win every game, I understand. But it would have been nice to get this one as the Oilers are still struggling to find any sort of rhythm. The Oilers actually had a rhythm at the start of the game, got the first power play of the game, scored the first goal of the game, not on that power play, but did score the first goal of the game. And things were looking hunky-dory for the Oilers. They would go up 2-1, and that's the issue. Four unanswered goals in the second and third period. It was just too much. Yes, Clem Costin. I would just like to give him a quick shout out because he he was honestly probably the Oilers' best player, other than McDavid and Drysital, which is every night. So you you can basically take those two players out of the 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 portion here. Clem Costin was the Oilers' best player, and he got credited with what five seconds left in the game with a goal. Good, good. He should have. He should have had a goal games before. The Oilers missed them in that game, I guess, against the, uh, who'd they even play yesterday? They, they got a win <laughs> yesterday, but they, they get a, a, a tough loss in Minnesota. It was Chicago. Oh, it just came back. Um, they get a tough loss against Minnesota, and I don't know. I mean, yes, let's be real. It's a second of a back-to-back. It's a tough game against a team who wants to win the game because they need a win. They had a tough start to the season, did Minnesota, but that's when you attack. That's when you get on your opponent. You had them against the wall. You had them 1-0. You had them 2-1. And they couldn't put it away. Connor McDavid scoring his 19th goal of the season. He was tied with Jason Robertson until... Jason, I guess uh, someone must have told Jason Robertson that McDavid tied him, so he went on to score a hat trick. Very good for my fantasy team, but I left Jake Ottinger on the bench, so it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, But uh, Connor McDavid scoring his 19th goal of the year. Now three back of the uh, league leader, Jason Robertson, but at the time was tied with him. And uh, Leon Dreisaitl scoring in his fourth straight game for the Oilers. And that's the unfortunate thing. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl each getting a goal and assist. Yes, Hyman got an assist. Yes, Bouchard got an assist. And actually, late in the game, we saw secondary scoring. But you take a look at the other games that the Edmonton Oilers won, and you take a look at who was scoring those goals. Tiaz Janmark scored his first goal as an Edmonton Oiler. Evan Bouchard has scored, what, three goals in the last five games? And they go on to win those games. Now, until five seconds left in the third period, it wasn't until Kleem Kostin scored that it was only Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl on the score sheet. And we know that if the Edmonton Oilers don't get that secondary scoring, then they're not going to win the game. That has been my takeaway 24 games into the season, that the Edmonton Oilers are unable to win unless there is one other person who scores other than Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisaitl. I don't know. I mean, uh, let's be real. The Oilers are now 13-11-0 on the year. 
They've enjoyed a nice little win streak. Yes, they, I mean, all streaks are bound to come to an end. But it would have been nice to see the Oilers string a couple more together. This is a good team. When A, they're all healthy, but B, they're firing on all cylinders. But I want to point something out to you. On the Oilers' power play with about 12 minutes left in that game, I want you to go back and take a look at the two benches. The Edmonton Oilers bench was all standing, every single one of them. You don't normally see that in the NHL. Normally, if a player is standing, that means, okay, get off the ice. We're, we're changing. I'm the next guy up. It may be a subtle thing. It may be a minor thing. But that tells me that despite being down in the game, yes, the Oilers didn't come back and win the game, but they have recently a couple of times. That tells me that despite being down in that game, late in that game, well, it's about 12 minutes left, that every single one of those players are still engaged in the play. And that's something you don't see in the NHL anymore. I just mentioned that. But that's something that you don't see in the NHL because you normally see that in the WHL, CHL in general, junior hockey in general. That's something when a coach goes, hey, kick, get your butt off the bench and get into this game. A minor thing. A minor thing. But I want you to take a look back and, and tell me what you think about that. I think it's, again, a minor thing, but that tells me that despite being down in the game, each and every one of those Edmonton Oilers are still in it. Do the Oilers come back and win this game? No. It's the second of a back-to-back. -back. They had a tough game in Chicago. Two of their last three wins, I'm pretty sure, off the top of my head, were comeback wins. Yes, they were comeback wins. So... How much blame can you put on them? The first two periods, first period and a half, really, the Edmonton Oilers played really well and took it to the Minnesota Wild. But they were unable to finish. And that's the issue with the Edmonton Oilers right now. If they want to be that good team that everybody imagines that they are and a Stanley Cup contender, then they have to win those games. Maybe not even win those games, but you can't lose... 5-3, to three. it should have been 5-2 to two if it wasn't for Mr. Clean. Uh, it's tough to see, because you know the Edmonton Oilers are better than this. You know that the Edmonton Oilers are down Kyler Yamamoto, Ryan McLeod, Warren Fogle, Evander Kane, Tyler Benson wasn't in the lineup tonight. Uh, need I go on? That's an issue for the Oilers, but you got to play through it. And the Oilers have found ways to win games, and that's why I'm a little back and forth on this game. Yes, the Oilers are on the second of a back-to-back. -back. They've had a really good stretch over the last couple of games, but it's self-inflicted wounds. Too many giveaways, too many goals right through the goaltender, too many allowing people in front of the net that your goaltender can't see, and eventually that leads to losses. And losses to teams that you should. Yes, I think Minnesota's a very good team. They've had a up-and-down season to start the year, but they're a good team. But at the same time, you had them against the wall. The Oilers were unable to finish against the Minnesota Wild. The Oilers are back in action on Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens as they look to improve on that 13-11-0 record. Now, the Oilers lose again with Jack Campbell in net. What do we do with Jack Campbell? We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball, soccer, and esports. They've got it all at Bet Online. Guys, the World Cup is going into the round of 16. What a day we 
saw in the World Cup today with Japan, Spain, Germany, and Costa Rica. Who would have thought that ball was in? But either way, I'm sure those lines look pretty crazy throughout the game. Either way, plus, if you love sports podcasts, which if you're listening to this, you probably do, they've got those over at Bet Online as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Alrighty, let's move on to Jack Campbell as the Edmonton Oilers lose again with Jack Campbell in the net. And uh, that's not good. Edmonton Oilers paid $5 million for Jack Campbell for five years. I know they get a lot of heat for that. I'll be honest. I, I still think that $5 million for a starting goaltender isn't a lot of money. Look at how much the Oilers would have had to pay for Jacob Markstrom. Yes, I know that's a different summer, but that's still a starting goaltender who's making more money than Jack Campbell. Yes, I only named one, but that's uh, as far as I can get right now. Either way, Jack Campbell needs to be better. And over the last five games, the Edmonton Oilers uh, that Jack Campbell has played in the Edmonton Oilers have only won two of those, and over the last six, they've still only lost, or won two of those. Two, four, and oh over the last six games, two, three, and oh over the last five. That's not good enough, especially for a starting goaltender of a team that's supposed to be a contender, and especially for a goaltender whose backup rookie goaltender is out playing him. Jack Campbell on 30 shots against the Minnesota Wild tonight. 25 saves. 22 of those coming at even strength out of the 25 that was shot at him at even strength. And two goals on four shots for the Wild on the power play. Let's be real. The Edmonton Oilers prevented... The Minnesota Wild from a lot of shots on the power play. Only four shots on the power play. That then means your goaltender needs to stand up for you. And that didn't happen. Two saves on four shots against the Minnesota Wild. And it hasn't necessarily been a trend for Jack Campbell. Which is kind of concerning. Over the last five games for Jack Campbell, if the Edmonton Oilers are on the penalty kill, he stopped four of all four shot at him against the New York Rangers, three of four against the New York Islanders, one of two against the uh, Hurricanes, and all six against the Tampa Bay Lightning. One goal here against the Islanders, one goal there against the Hurricanes. Yes, the Oilers' penalty kill isn't that good. But when you're only allowing two shots against the Hurricanes, four shots against the Wild, four shots against the Rangers, you got to be preventing less goals. You got to be stopping more of those. <sighs> I'm at a crossroads with Jack Campbell. I have his jersey up here. I was pretty excited-ish when the Oilers signed him. Did I think Darcy Kemper was maybe the better option? Maybe. I don't think he's been having that much better of a season. Yes, the, the Capitals get a lot of praise for their goaltending this year, but I don't think a lot of that has to do with Darcy Kemper. But either way... Stuart Skinner is outplaying Jack Campbell, a, a goaltender that was supposed to play, what, 60% of the games? Now Jack Campbell is at risk of playing, well, basically the amount of games that Stuart Skinner was slated to have. Against the New York Rangers, Jack Campbell got the win, 20 saves on 23 shots. 
Against the Islanders, 28 saves on 30 shots in that game. Honestly, one of his better games as an Edmonton Oiler, other than the Tampa Bay Lightning game where he stopped 35 of 37, led the Oilers to a 3-2 win. And let's be real, the win against the New York Rangers as well was a game where the Edmonton Oilers had to come back from a 3-0 deficit, which a lot of those goals as well were on Jack Campbell. I've seen on Twitter, how much does it take to buy out Jack Campbell? What do you do with Jack Campbell? And like Zach Lang from Oilers Nation said, 24 games in, you, the realistic answer and, and easy answer is you stick with him. You st obviously, you stick with Jack Campbell. But maybe not in the sense of he's going to keep being your starting goaltender. I think you're going to keep riding the hot hand if you're the Edmonton Oilers, which is a pain in the butt considering Jack Campbell was supposed to come in here and be the stable goaltender for the Oilers. Now it's a goaltender who now just barely has over 30 games in the NHL over his, under his belt. If he even has that in Stuart Skinner. And, and realistically, a lot of Edmonton Oilers fans, including myself, think that Stuart Skinner and feel more comfortable when Stuart Skinner is in the net. What does that say about your premier blockbuster signing over this, this summer? This, uh, in his career, Jack, or actually, uh, Stuart Skinner hasn't even reached 30 games in his career. He has 26 games. 24 started, 13 wins, 11 losses. That's who Jack Campbell is losing to. 26 games under his belt. He also has a 914 save percentage and a goals against average of a 291. Do you want to guess where Jack Campbell's is? Nowhere near that. Nowhere near that. He's losing to a 25-year-old in his first full year in the NHL. Jack Campbell's sitting at an 872 save percentage and a 412 goals against. I can't remember who it was, but somebody was saying, a pundit of some sort, was saying uh, the easy way to tell whether or not a goalie battle is a goalie battle is to look at how each player or each goaltender plays with the same defense in front of them. Well, with the same defense in front of them, Jack Campbell is an 8.72 goals against average, and Stuart Skinner is at a 9.14. Then at the same time, Stuart Skinner's at a 2.91 goals against average. And, well, Jack Campbell's at a 4.12. It's not like all of a sudden the Edmonton Oilers defense plays better in front of Stuart Skinner or the Edmonton Oilers have a brand new defense in front of Stuart Skinner. It's the exact same. So it might be gut check time the Edmonton Oilers, and more specifically, Jack Campbell. What do you think? What, what would you do with Jack Campbell? I don't want any of those crazy things like, send him to the minors, put him on waivers. Come on. Yes, I know we just saw Cal Peterson on waivers, but let's be a little realistic here. What can we do with Jack Campbell, who you just signed, by the way, on a massive deal, on a big-ish deal? So are you going to sour a contract? Or are you going to put in the first year of that five-year contract? Doubt in his mind. And remember that there is games after this year. Or would you just ride him out? Or would you trade him? Or what would you do? Let me know. Uh, it, honestly, because uh, I'm at a loss. I, I don't know. Uh, let's move on to the good, the bad, and the ugly from the game against the Minnesota Wild in just a second. But first, I want to thank you for making Locked On Oilers your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, make sure you tune in to Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. 
Locked On Sports Today. Available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you find your podcasts. Alrighty, let's move into the good, the bad, and the ugly from the game against the Minnesota Wild for the Edmonton Oilers. And we'll start off with the good as we need a little good in our lives. And that is the Edmonton Oilers scored the first goal of the game. Yes, I know the Oilers lost, and they don't normally do that when they score the first goal of the game, so it may be a little bit of an odd one. But it was big for an Oilers team that was looking to get some sort of rhythm at the start of the game. The Oilers got the first power play of the game and really ran the first period and the first half of the second period as well until they started playing into the Minnesota Wilds game. But that's good. The Edmonton Oilers now in two straight games have scored the first goal of the game. And hopefully they can keep building. Unfortunately for the Oilers, that is their issue, is scoring the first goal of the game. But they do it against the Chicago Blackhawks, and they do it against the Minnesota Wild. Now maybe they can start building and building and building for the next couple of games. So the good from this game is Leon Dreisaitl's first goal of the game for the Edmonton Oilers. Now the bad. We just spent an entire segment talking about him, but the bad was Jack Campbell, as I don't think the Edmonton Oilers really played too, too bad in front of him. Yes, the giveaways were a bad thing. Yes, it would have been nice to see the Oilers finish on a couple more of those opportunities. But bad goals against, especially that first goal, the Kareem off the boards right to Erickson Eck through Jack Campbell. And that wasn't good. It wasn't good. Three or four of those goals went right through Jack Campbell. <sighs> As I believe it was World Hockey Reports, which shout out to them, fantastic, fantastic. I know a lot of people are a little polarizing on Twitter, but I'm a big supporter of World Hockey Report. As they tweeted out today, they were surprised to find out that Jack Campbell, or every time that they look and see that Jack Campbell's 6'3", they're shocked. He seems and plays like he's 5'6", which, hey, hey, 5'6 is a good height, okay? That's how tall Rey Mysterio is. But not for a goaltender, and especially not for a goaltender who stands almost an entire foot taller than six foot or five foot six. So. Jack Campbell, the bad of the night, saving 25 of 30, 22 on even strength, and two half of the shots fired at him on the power play. And the ugly for the Edmonton Oilers is their lack of killer instinct. They're up one nothing in that game. Yes, they had a tough goal against. Uh, uh, for uh, from Joel Erickson, excuse me. Then they took the lead again, a two-on-one from Connor and Leon. And then nobody else decided to join up. And then Minnesota scored, tied it up. Then Minnesota scored again, took the lead. And then Minnesota decided to score again, up by two, and then scored in the third period and put it out of reach, five to two. The Edmonton Oilers are having this problem again. They had the issue, same thing against Chicago, allowed two goals in 19 seconds. Same issue against the uh, New York Rangers. Same issue as the game they won on home ice. Seemed like the Edmonton Oilers are lacking that killer instinct to win hockey games. And you see, if you are lacking that killer instinct, that, well, you're going to lose hockey games. And that's exactly what happened here. You're not going to win every one that hope and, oh, Connor comes back and wins it for the Oilers. Yes. That doesn't happen without a full team with a killer instinct. As my one of my favorite coaches I ever played for in baseball uh, said, whenever you have the foot down to the pedal, you don't let your foot off of it. Put the pedal to the floor and keep going. Now, there may have been some male appendages that also were put in that saying, but the Edmonton Oilers have their foot on the pedal sometimes, but they let it go and then realize that they just gave their opportunity to the other team. 
and that's what happened against the Wild tonight. And so the good, the bad, and the ugly from the game against the Minnesota Wild. The good, they scored the first goal, so that's good. That's always good for the Edmonton Oilers. The bad, Jack Campbell, as he loses again for the Oilers. Two wins in his last six games for the Oilers. And the ugly, lack of killer instinct for the Oilers. Let's wrap it up there as the Edmonton Oilers are back in action on Saturday against the Montreal Canadiens at home. Thankfully, back at Rogers Place, puck drop at 5 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Actually, we're in daylight savings. I don't know. Just 5 o'clock if you're in Edmonton. Let's call it there, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful day. I shall see you tomorrow. Stay safe and hopefully heading into the weekend, we can play La Bamba, baby.